Today we're trying to cast our deck for free in Storm Off with Kylox. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Safrata Live, and we have a super fun one today. We are doing some brawling with a card that I've been wanting to play ever since it was previewed in Kylox Visionary Inventor. So Kylox is just a super cool card. 7 mana 4-4, four, four, Menace, Ward 2, and Haste. When it attacks, we sack any number of creatures, and then we exile X cards from our library where X was their total power, and we cast any number of instants and sorceries from among them for free. So this is a card that I wanted to make work in standard, but I tried and I tried and I just really couldn't make it work. It's a little too expensive, even with War 2, it dies a little too easily, it gets countered a little too easily, and we don't really have that many good support pieces for it. But I realized that Historic Brawl is the perfect place to make Kylox really pop off, and when we do our thing, we can use Kylox to cast all or most of our deck for free, which is absolutely wild. So here's the plan of the deck. So the goal of the deck is in the early game, we're really just drawing cards and filling our graveyard. That's step one. So we have like Faithless Looting, we have a ton of card draw, Thirst for Knowledge, Thirst for Discoveries, Faithless Salvaging. Basically, if the early game card draw spell deduce, Born Upon the Winds, we're gonna have it in our deck. Ops, Considers, because all we wanna do in the early game is stock our graveyard and dig through our deck to find some specific cards. So step one, early game, draw cards stay alive. Step two is do some ramping, but the way we ramp in this deck is kind of neat. We're mostly ramping with treasure. So we have like seize the spoils. A looting effect fills our graveyard, is a spell for Kylox, and it makes a treasure. We have unexpected windfall, pirate's pillage, big score, two treasures, card draw, filling our graveyard, spell swindle. If we encounter a big spell, we make a ton of treasures. So we want to get a bunch of treasures on the battlefield because what we're trying to set up with this deck is a turn where we have enough mana that we can pay one of our payoff creatures and also Kylox in the same turn. So our payoff creatures are these creatures that have power and toughness equal to the number of instants and sorceries in our graveyard. So we have Hani Jen, we got Enigma Drake, we got Kinetic Augur, we got Crackling Drake, Seize the Storm, makes a token that does that. Melek, the best of the bunch, since it gets double the power of instants and sorceries in our graveyard. So if we stock our graveyard, we should be able to make these cards 10 power, maybe 20 power. Melek can get absolutely huge. So if we can get one or two of these on the battlefield, all we do is we play Kylox, we swing with it, with haste it as ward, so hopefully it doesn't die right away. We sacrifice all the rest of our board. Sometimes we get like a servo or two from like Sahili uh, that could also help up our creature power count. Although honestly, it's hard to cast enough spells to make enough soldiers with third path iconoclast or Sahili to really make it work with Kylox. But we just sack everything and hopefully we're gonna exile 20, 30, 40, maybe all of our deck, and then we get to cast all the instants and sorceries for free, and all those free spells should just win us the game. The last piece of the puzzle is actually winning the game, and for that, we just have all these big spells, Creative Outburst, five damage, Explosive Welcome, five damage, Magma Obus, four damage, and a token, Explosive Singularity, 10 damage. We also, Inescapable Blaze, I forgot that one, six damage. We got all these burn spells, also smaller ones, like we have some Magma Jets in there, we got Lightning Bolt in there. So we have all these burn spells, we also have a a bunch of spell copying effects like the best is display a power which just copies any number of spells on the stack so we hit all these spells with Kylox. we put them all on the stack we hopefully copy them a few times with display a power or like double cast or whatever and then we just burn our opponent out of the game if we can't win just with the burn we hit we got a plan for that we also have mind's desire and also grape shot which are essentially auto win cards because of storm so if we hit these cards we're already going to be casting like 10 or 20 spells for free that's gonna get our storm count ridiculously high so that we can cast another 10 or 20 spells for free with mind's desire or just grape shot our opponent out of the game directly one damage at a time so that's all we're trying to do with the deck basically draw a ton of cards make some treasures with our card draw effects fill our graveyard to grow our creatures and then get up to like 12-ish mana so in theory we can like crackling drake kylock same turn melek kylock same turn sack our big creature cast our deck for free kill you on the spot and that's all we're trying to do so that is kylox that is our deck for today i will tell you when it works it is spectacular but let's get in the video so you can see it for yourself thanks for watching everyone i hope you enjoy it and i'll be back in a bit for the wrap up need some magic cards well you can snag them from our sponsor card kingdom over at cardkingdom.com slash mtg goldfish we are trying to cast our deck or at least most of it with kylox this week and ah budget mana <laughs> 
We're not a full budget deck, but we're kind of like semi-budget-ish. Trying to be budget with a 100 card deck. Uh, this is much better. At least we got both of our colors of mana. Let's see what our opponent's up to with Eklazots. Schwamp. Oh god, Dark Rit. Ooh, that's frightening. And Worn Power Stone. Okay. Well, that's better than it could have been. <laughs> it's still a scary start, though. Opponent's gonna have four mana on turn two. I mean, we do have a lot of treasure producers, so we got our ramp coming. That's our primary source of ramp in this deck, is looting effects that make treasures. Okay, Bitter Blossom. That's fine. Pact and Negation. We might just end up discarding that, honestly. All right, let's get rid of Pact. Let's get rid of Pact. Oh, no land. That's awkward. The main upside of Pact is just protecting Kylox. We don't really want to spend it to, like, try to counter an Ak We can't even spend it to counter an Aklazots. We just got to survive. The funny thing is, Aklazots might be good for us. We do have <laughs> Mizzix Mastery in hand. So discarding spells might not actually be the worst. There's Aklazots. I mean, it is a 4-4 Flying Lifelinker. And it does punish us for discarding lands, but... Opponent. Okay, we draw a land, which is big. Uh... Huh. Hmm. This might be a Mystic's Mastery style game. I think we just Pirate's Pillage and discard our most expensive spell and hit a couple lands and make a couple treasures. All right, well, we can... I mean, we can just mix this Mastery. We're also filling our grave. The awkward part about Mystic's Mastery is it does kind of non-bow with a, like our haughty gins and a lot of our get big based on spells and graveyards. Pony gets in, we will discard the thirst for knowledge, but we're probably just gonna have to Mizzix Mastery. I don't know how long we can wait. I guess we could try to expansion explosion. See what our opponent does here. We're down to 20, black market connections. I mean, I love black market connections, but that's better than a ooh, big score. Can we wait another turn? I think we can. Actually, maybe we can Kylox after all. We can actually big score copy the big score. I think that's the best bet. We're just gonna do this main phase. We're gonna, eh, all right, discard the land. Opponent, yes, you get a bat. We will expansion explosion, copy the big score. The nice thing about copying is we don't have to pay the discard for this one. So draw four, make four treasures. I mean, we're gonna be set up to do something big next turn one way or another. Uh, okay. Nothing great. Mind's Desire. We would rather have that in the graveyard. We could Mind's Desire for two, but that's all of our treasures. I think we just pass. I think we just pass, and actually, Aklazots is really helping us, isn't it? <laughs> we can Aklazots discard the Mind's Desire, then just Mizzix Mastery next turn. Well, this might not be the Kylox kill, but it is backup plan. <laughs> I mean, that's our. Uh, if we're not winning with Kylox, the other way to win is fill our graveyard in, cast a huge Mizzix Mastery. About it, Black Market Connections, all the modes. Yes, Kylox is actually, or our opponent's Aklazots is actually really helping us here. <laughs> this discarding of spells. Yeah, we discard this Mind's Desire, I think. Because we can stack it in a way where our storm count's going to be super high. Well, let's see if our opponent has something really good. Hopefully they're just holding a bunch of removal that they haven't been able to use. Shimmel, all right. Well, yeah, that is frightening. Come on, no, no discard, no thoughtsies about it. Jimmels into Grave Pact. Well, we don't have any creatures, so that is fine. All right, well, this should be a pretty good Mizzix Mastery. <laughs> Pull from tomorrow. Uh, so play the land. And yeah, we just gotta do it. Mizzix Mastery, overload it. Every spell in the graveyard about to be cast. Do they play it? I don't know if we literally win here. I guess we're gonna find out. So we get to seize the spoils, uh, discard a land, triggers the Aklazots, uh, Pirate's Pillage, discard a pull from tomorrow. Actually, we can Kylox too, can't we? We're gonna make enough treasures. Wow, this is actually kind of absurd. We don't have a creature though. Well, we'll see. We'll see what we hit. Thirst for knowledge. Uh, explosive welcome. Kill the Aklazots and a dork. Expansion. Copy. Big score? Yeah, let's just. Let's copy one of our treasure draw spells. Let's copy big score. And then mine's desire. Storm count at seven. Uh, no pact of negation. All right, so opponent, yes, get your triggers. Seven more free cards coming. I think we have enough treasures that we can follow this up by Hawny Jin into Kylox. All right, counter spell. I guess that's kind of nice if they have removal. Supreme Will also can be a counter spell. Island, 
All right, come on, Divine Desire. Something, something better than that. Not, ooh, there we go. That's a Magma Opus. Magma Opus is nice, too, because that's a body for Kylox. Uh, Dragon Rage Channeler, also a body for Kylox. And Faithful Saluting, sure. And Mountain, sure. And now we draw a ton of cards, make a ton of treasures. Kill the Aklazots. Draw some more cards. And we have three mana left. Oh, I forgot we got three mana off that removal spell. Oh, God. Uh, Grave Pack doesn't do anything. Sure, sure, sure. Thirst for Knowledge. Draw and discard. Uh, Sahili. And I guess, cause, well, let's keep the Kazool's Fury. Let's discard Sahili and Faithless Salvaging. All right, so we get, what, five more treasures. Five more cards, six more cards. Draw, 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 draw. Yeah, we have enough mana that we can, <laughs> we can actually do the Kylax thing too. So Supreme Will for free, might as well. Uh, well, that's a lot of lands. Dragon Rage Channeler, I guess we should have probably done that first. Faithless Looting, do a little surveilling. Uh, well, yeah, I guess we'll keep a fling. I don't know if anything we, well, I don't know if anything we do here actually matters. Are you gonna kill our DRC? That is fine. Go for the throw. Actually, our opponent's tapped out. Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll keep the flag. Oh, right. <laughs> Chimmel. Well, the counter is going to go to waste anyway, so we might as well cast it. <laughs> Oops. I mean, I, I don't know if anything we do who really matters, because I think we just win this game. Magma Opus, hit ya. Tap down a couple things. This Kylox is about to pop off. Even with all the spells exiled, I think this Kylox is about to pop off. Hit ya, draw some cards. Let's get some power on the battlefield. Crackling Drake, 16 power. That was a good draw, because it triggers off exiled stuff too. We can, what, Hauntijin Kylox? Let's just Kylox, actually. I think this is fine. We'll Kylox, and we'll leave up We'll leave up display of power to uh, do a little copying <laughs> of everything we cast. All right, 20 cards deep. Get to cast all the instants and sorceries for free. Does this win us the game? Oh, we need we need some damage. All right, deduce. Compulsive research. Draw some cards. Uh, oh, that's good. That's good. Magma Jet. Okay, I think this might be enough. So Magma Jet's two. Creative Outburst is five. So that's eight. Double cast, Galvanic Iteration, Seize the, well, we're gonna cast all these, so Seize the Storm, Unexpected Windfall, Discard a Tap Land, Spike Field Hazard, so that's nine damage. But then we're gonna get to triple it, I think, with this, wait, does this work? Cause Display of Power, but we can't copy Display of Power, right? Well, all right, let's see what happens here. <laughs> is the, oh, there's a lightning bolt. Okay, I think lightning bolt might be the last piece of damage we needed for lethal. Plus we get to wrath their board, so Kylax is gonna hit for four. So this actually will just be straight up lethal, right? <laughs> ah, spike field, okay. Uh, unexpected windfall, draw some cards. Seize the storm, make an 11-11, galvanic iteration, double cast, creative outburst you, down to 15, magma jet you. Bottom and bottom down. We're just gonna cast the greatest lightning bolt of all time. Uh, discard and discard and discard, and then deduce. Draw a card. Oh my god, that's grape shot. We also have a flint. We can just win this in so many different ways. <laughs> what is the most creative way to win? So lightning bolt copied three times. And then we can fling too. We don't need, I, I don't even know. We don't even need it. <laughs> I'm, we could have done this in so many different ways. <laughs> we could have display of powered everything. We can grape shot, we can fling, but this actually, we don't even have to do anything. This is actually just exaxes from Kylox attacking. But I mean, throw a 20, 20 at your face. <laughs> what a turn, what a turn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think I played that tournament very well, but it just didn't matter because when you get to cast your deck for free, good things happen. <laughs> Kylox. I mean, I guess we'll keep it. We have a brainstorm. Expansion Explosion's nice because it can't copy opponent's stuff, so maybe we can catch a ramp spell or something from our opponent's deck. And our mana's fine. Plus, our deck is pretty much just card draw, so 
We can keep a lot of lands and spell type hands with this deck because a lot of what we're going to draw into is just going to be more card draw. And grabs a snow covered swamp. Well, explosive welcomes a little expensive. We'd much rather be hitting that with Kylox than drawing it, but. Ooh, Sublime Epiphany. Also a little expensive. Let's see what our opponent does. Untaps. Mountain. Double cast. Well, we really need some lands. This might go horribly, horribly wrong here. I mean, we can brainstorm for them, but there's always a risk we get brainstorm locked. Ooh, Harrow. Oh, wait, we can copy this. And we don't have to sack a land. Oh, well, this is actually amazing. We don't have to sack the land because we didn't cast it. We're just copying it. Uh, yes, we would like two lands. There go. Wait. Our opponent just scoops? <laughs> we didn't even counter it. We just copied it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brawl players are so funny. We are Kyloxing this week in Historic Brawl and mulliganing. Thankfully, we get a free mulligan to hit our colors with this mana base. <laughs> our mana base is very budget friendly. Uh, this hand looks fine. I like the DRC. DRC is really nice in this deck because not because we care about attacking with it, which we don't, but it's a really good way to just like fill our graveyard, which we kind of want anyway, because that's how we power up our creature. Bugler Rat. Uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to do the noise when the opponent plays it, but <laughs> respect, I guess. Oh, wait. So this is our second Aklazots matchup. Last time it was kind of just like generic mono black good stuff, though. And our opponent making his discard helped us. Bugler Rat, though, makes me think our opponent's actually, oh, God, Elder Fang Disciple. That's basically another Bugler Rat, but a sad one because <laughs> it's not a rat. Ooh, our opponent might actually be a discard deck. This is not going well. I mean, the good news is we do have a bunch of card draw, right? We have a bunch of card draw in our deck. <sighs> yeah, let's just campus and go. But it would be nice if our opponent stopped making us discard for a minute. But when it gets in, hits us. We will take the two. Uh, sure. Well, he's not probably just beats us. We have a lot of we have a lot of looting effects in this deck. If our opponent just slams, ooh, opponent's missing their land drop, and we will keep the big score. I'm surprised they didn't print big score in Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Let's get down the storm kill Narnas. This is the highest upside play, right? So now we can make treasures as we cast our spells. And we, s well, all right. Oh, has Infernal Grasp. Uh, well, we gotta start attacking, hit ya. Don't know, technically we're winning the race at the moment, oddly. Uh, opponent. Oh, no. Go blank, okay. That's really bad for us. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, this bag has been crushing it so far, but. Maybe we have met our match with the Bugler Rats. Well, card run to card run. Uh, discard a land. Well, ill-timed explosion can can sweep the board. Not that our opponent has much to sweep. Seriously, opponent. Mine rot too. <laughs> I swear, opponent just typed discard into <laughs> into scribe and put every card in their deck. <laughs> well, hit ya. Down to 18. They also shut down our DRC, so now we are not winning the race. Drawing this pack to negation is super not good here. Although I guess it could, I mean, I guess we can cast it. We have the mana to pay. We're not doing anything else. <sighs> All right. Life is hard when you have to discard a card every turn. Well, hit you. Down to 17. This Kylox is not doing anything yet. We could try to grow the Otter, I guess. It kind of is like mega prowess. Why play the end in Historic Brawl? I mean, we're gonna let it go. We could Pact it, but then we gotta spend our whole next turn paying for Pact, which seems bad. That is a removal spell you do not see that much in Brawl <laughs> because of the singletonness. Well, all right about it. We need some more card draw. Target opponent discards two and mills a card. So you lose a life, they gain a life. <sighs> well, let's get the Otter into exile. Put it on an adventure. Resolves. They mill an Enigma Drake, which we wouldn't have minded. Well, uh, play the Otter. Play the... Wow, we are getting wrecked. We are getting wrecked. Opponent drew, like, no lands in every dis... Painful? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, we're so dead. We are so dead. They've emptied our... Wow, it's the best painful quandary ever. Galvanic iteration. We just can't cast spells, right? Really? Not... Even if we draw spells, we can't cast them. Painful quandary probably just beats us by itself. Could you... Oh, and a Liliana. Could you imagine trying to cast all the Kylox spells with a painful quandary out? <laughs> we would literally just die if our deck popped off. Well... Wow, opponent's just gonna make everyone sack? I guess they draw cards. Well, Prismari Campus. Scry 1. Supreme Will. Honestly... We might just be skewing. Well, if you gotta lose, lose to bugler rats. That's my motto. 
We are Kyloxing today, playing some semi-budget Kylox. Let me know in the comments, would you count this as a budget deck? Considering we're playing a 100 card format, is 29 rares and mythics, is that enough to be considered budget friendly? It's obviously budget friendly er if you played a five color deck you'd spend 29 rares and mythics just on your mana base if you wanted to let me know if it counts does it what is a budget for historic brawl on the other hand because historic brawl is not really a competitive format i guess you could argue the other side that it should be an even lower budget because you can get away with playing cheaper cards anyway opponent madrotha ing our hand is very expensive. In our dream world though, we might be able to spell swindle like a Moldrotha, and that would be pretty good. <laughs> Could you imagine if we like spell swindle, mission briefing spell swindle? Mm, so many treasures, and we have ex uh, expansion explosion in hand. Well, opponent, yeah, gonna do a little ramping, gain a little life, sure, sure, sure. So opponent seems to be kind of salt eye good stuff, Moldrotha so far. I mean, we are gonna get to Spell Swindle in time for the Madrotha, it looks like, which is actually kind of big. <clears throat> I imagine this Madrotha, if it just came down on six, it probably beats us. Why is everyone playing Bugler Rats? My God, I mean, this is not literal Bugler Rats. It's actually better Bugler Rats. Uh, I guess we can exile an extra land here. <laughs> it's a Bugler Rats kind of day here in Historic Brawl. I'm playing the land past the turn. Supreme Will's a good draw. That's another another way we encounter something. Although we'd really love to pop this spell swindle on a six drop. Spell swindle's like better mana drain, right? <laughs> Except it costs five mana. That is the the drawback bonus it gets in with the Fen Lurker. Plague Crafter. Is this another discard deck? I mean, I guess I guess Moldrotha does kind of like discard. I mean, we can discard this explosive singularity, which is a million miles away from being cast. That's another card that we really want in the deck for Kylox on our hand. We don't have enough creatures usually to really do it. Well, let's go digging. Not going to copy it with Expansion Explosion. Counterspell's tempting, but we need to hit our land drops. Let's take the campus. Well, we wouldn't hit our lands anyway. Play the tap land past the turn. Come on, play that Madrotha opponent. We would like to spell swindle you. Opponent hits us. Down to 21. Just do it. You know you wanna. Think of the value. You got a Fen Lurker in your graveyard. Well, okay. The one ring is good enough to spell Swindle. Please don't have a counter. All right. Oh, okay. So we're not dead. We're not dead. We get four treasures. We stop a one ring. And now we can mission briefing spell Swindle. We could also just cast a big expansion explosion. We kind of want our treasures though. Our deck pops off the best when we can play Kylox and a big creature for Kylox in the same turn. Pony gets and hits us. If they Madrotha, we are definitely mission briefing spell swindling though. They didn't have a counter last turn, or I think they would have used it. Shieldred. We can't let Shieldred resolve. Our deck's all about drawing cards. I don't even know. If we expansion explosion Shieldred, do we die? <laughs> I'm pretty sure the card draw damage would trigger, right? The way the way it's set up. So I think we'd kill it, but take like 10. Well, let's spell swindle it. Keep making them treasures. We do have to spend eight treasure, but that's fine. All right, so we're up to seven treasures. One, two, three, four. I mean, I guess we can cast an expansion explosion for four without using treasures. Or we could cast it for a million if we spend treasures. Oh, our opponent's probably getting back Uro, aren't they? We might have to just expansion explosion the Uro. Refilling our hand also would be nice. We are kind of running out of action, but we do want to maintain some treasures. All right, opponent, going to Uro. And draw a card and ramp. Certainly. All right. No, no thought seizing. We get to untap. We draw the seize the storm, which is really good. That's one of our Kylox pieces. But I think we got to kill Uro. The question is just how big of X do we go? So we definitely want to at least fill our hand. We got to go six to kill it. Maybe we go eight. We want to overdraw a little bit. Let's go nine. This still leaves us a a two treasure stockpile. So kill the Uro. Draw a ton of cards. Hmm. All right, let's spend a treasure on a DRC. There's a Melek. We got a plan. We got a plan. So if we can get down Melek, one, two, three, four, we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mana. So Melek plus Kylox is 12. All right, here comes the Madrotha. Great Henge. Kind of awkward for our opponent that they exiled a lot of their good cards to that Uro and then played Madrotha. That's a bit of a non-bow, right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about this. Uro, I, at the same time, 
Our opponent's got a great hand, Jaden Madrolfa, and they're popping off with Uro again. So it's not like we're in great shape here. Opponent gets in, hits us. We probably just have to kill this Madrolfa. So our game plan is get enough mana to Malik Kylox in the same turn and live long enough to do so. So I think we need to escapable blaze here. Do a little surveilling, get rid of the brainstorm. Can we do it next turn? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I think we can, maybe. Let's just let's just uh let's just deduce here. I'm a little worried about dying. Like our opponent, they have so much mana and they have a great hand. So you know our opponent's gonna be really going off. We'd rather wait two turns if we could. I mean, we're definitely nine, 10. We're definitely not doing it next turn. We would rather seize the storm first. What we wanna do ideally is seize the storm into windfall and then Melek, Kylox, cast like our deck. Our opponents, at, you might be thinking, why don't you win with Fling and Melek or something? Uh, opponents at 36, all those Uros and Great Henges are adding up. Our Malik's big, but not that big. Alright, opponent's just gonna cast a bunch of stuff, draw a bunch of cards, Black Market Connections, Delighted Halfling, yeah, 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 Blanda War Elves, draws a card. I mean, we can survive two turns, right? Ren and Realm Breaker. I guess a Sweeper wouldn't be bad. Opponent, gonna fire up a land. Yup, 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 Pat. <laughs> well, that timing was anything but ill. Actually, ill in the... <laughs> 90s slang way. That was the illest <laughs> of timed explosions for our deck. Well, that definitely means we're living for another. Ooh, and we can hold on to a pact. All right. Oh, that's that's big. That's big. That's big. So the only bad news about this is we're not going to be able to. We're not going to be able to seize the storm, I don't think. Or we're not going to. We're going to unexpected windfall. Pact is nice. Pact does mean that if our opponent finds a removal spell, it's not going to hopefully be able to fizzle the, the big combo turn. Well, it is almost time. Opponent untaps. Black Market Connection. So you gotta go all the way. Gotta go all the way, opponent. No fear. Take the six. Yeah, opponent takes the six. I don't think they can kill us, right? Kinnon. Oh, all right. Kinnon is frightening. Even more mana. Yeah, opponent's playing a lot of good cards. <laughs> Phyrexian script and also Phyrexian scriptures. I don't know if I consider that a good card, but I mean, I guess it's cute with Maldrotha. This seems like a very well put together Maldrotha deck. Phyrexian scriptures is like a wrath that you can loop essentially with Maldrotha. What else you got? Gonna turn on a land. I mean, we're not dead. We're definitely not dead. The question's gonna be: Is this Kylox good enough, opponent? And do they have interaction? Like they could have multiple pieces of interaction. Well, unexpected windfall. Discard the Seize the Storm. Two. Uh, more islands. Well, play an island. And Melek. 22, 22. I mean, not quite our whole deck, right? But going 22 cards deep with Kylox should be enough, hopefully. Well, here comes the Kylox. Cast 22 cards from your deck, maybe. Opponent, cannon. Wow, if that's all they got, what could they hit? Chupacabra or something? All right, just a voracious Hydra. Well, we get to do the thing. We get to do the thing. Does the thing win us the game? Opponent, great hench, draws, grows, sure, fine, combat. Here we come, Kylox is home, sack it. Exile 22 cards, is it enough to win? Oh, there's a display of, oh God, and a grape shot. Oh, it's definitely enough to win. Oh, it is definitely enough to win. So we wanna cast display of power last. So explosive welcome. Hit you for five, hit your thing. Uh, lightning bolt, hit you for three. So that's an opponent, scoops it up. Yeah, I mean, that was super lethal, right? Especially with hitting the display of power. We just put all that, and the grape shot, but we just put everything on the stack and then copy everything. Pretty sure that with the grape shot, especially, that is super lethal. And that's Kylog's power. Stay alive, stay alive, stay alive. Play your deck. <laughs> <laughs> we got the bag mobus too. Uh yeah. This this deck's sweet. This deck's sweet. This deck has been pretty sweet so far. I have I have enjoyed playing this deck. Kylox is just I wanted to build this in standard actually. That was my first impulse was to try to build standard Kylox. Ah, I couldn't make it work. But Brawl seems like a good place for it. Opponent. 
Liliana Red Horde General, eh? Playing only against a lot of black commanders. Uh, Sand seems fine. I like that we have a Sweeper and Crackling Drake. Uh, probably our best Kylox card, honestly. Uh, let's start on the island. We need double red for double cast, but there's no way we're double casting on a turn to opponent gets and hits us. Gonna level up. Wouldn't mind some card draw. I mean, worst case, we can Supreme Will next turn. Ill-timed explosion the turn after that. There could also be a world where we get down the Stormkiln artist. We haven't really seen Stormkiln pop off, but Stormkiln does have a lot of oh, preacher. All right, well, we're definitely gonna need to wrath ASAP. More spell copying. <laughs> All right, well, eventually we're gonna copy a lot of spells. Whoa, Strider, sure, I mean, we could counter it, but we're gonna Wrath, so I think that's fine. We have to Wrath because of Preacher, basically. We can't let our opponent just draw an extra card every turn. That would be less than ideal. Opponent, Preacher, draws. The question is, do we Supreme Will, Anticipate Mode, or Impulse Mode, or do we hold it? We might have to hold it for the Lily. Yeah, let's just do it. Well, yeah, we gotta hold it. We gotta hold it for the Lily. We can Wrath this turn. Sweep the board. See if our opponent sacks in response. The way this works is there is like a second trigger. So we draw two, we discard increasing vengeance and I guess storm killed. We need a four to get rid of the preacher. I'd rather have the big score, I think. So now our opponent can sack in response if they want to do some scrying, which, well, all right. I think you might as well. I don't think there's any downside to it, but we'll we'll take it. Opponent, Cabal Stronghold. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, uh, well, at least it's not Liliana. Liliana's even even worse for us. Let's play the land. Let's get down the DRC. And we'll just pass. We really can't let this Liliana resolve. If they don't Liliana, then we can big score pitch complete the circuit, probably. Alright, Priest of Forgotten Gods. That's a little annoying just because it can ramp, I guess. Opponent gets in, hits us. Down to 13. We are kind of sort of dying here. Opponent. All right, let's big score. Pitching, complete the circuit. We probably need another sweeper, really. I mean, we don't have a land in hand. We should draw one though, right? Probably. Yeah, let's mill it. So draw two, make a couple treasures. We do hit the land. Mission briefing. All right, so we can mission briefing, briefing the wrath. We can kill the Lolth, right? Yeah, let's attack first, at least. See if we can get this Lolth off the battlefield. Our opponent could definitely have removal. They haven't cast any yet. All right, go for the throat. Interesting. I'm tempted to just copy it and kill the priest. And then we could Supreme Will it, but then if they draw land, Liliana comes down. If we don't kill the priest, Liliana definitely can come down. Plus, we want to get rid of this Lolth. All right, let's see. So we're going to... Start by copying the go for the throw. Trigger surveil. Mill a third path iconoclast. Kill the priest. How much do, well, oh, I'm so torn. Yeah, I think we're gonna. <sighs> maybe, uh, maybe we just gotta let it go. Getting rid of the Loth is so tempting, but I don't think Loth just auto beats us the way that Liliana does. We really can't risk this Liliana coming down. One, two, one, two, three. We're getting close to being able to like mission briefing for ill-timed explosion and leave up Supreme Will. Okay, just play play the Liliana, please. Opponent draws a card. Oh, oh we really just, oh, she owned around. All right, well, that also is really bad for us. I don't even think we can sweep that away because we don't have a five, so we're just gonna counter it. And I guess we'll deal to, with Liliana when it comes to it. Hopefully we can just combo off. That's our most realistic way of winning is gonna be to just combo kill. So we can mission briefing sweep. What we need to do is get to the point, oh, spell swindle on Liliana would be so good. We gotta mill it though, it's too, I think it's too slow here. Well. Maybe we can keep it. Let's ill time. We got a ill timed explosion. Sweep up these spiders for the moment. We draw the spell swindle, but can't cast it. Oh, if I had known the spell swindle was going to be on top, we could have killed the shieldred. Well, okay, sweep the board. Pony gets some loyalty on Lolf. I don't know if we can survive or not, because now they can definitely slam the Liliana. We're at eight mana. There's a Liliana. We need to live. 
spell swindle something big and go crackling drake kylox and we got a shot that's that's our hope we have like one turn we draw magma jet magma jet the wolf i guess Unexpected windfall. Well, Jari Disruption goes bottom. We'll keep the windfall. Well, it kind of comes down to our opponent casting a big spell. I'm sure we need our opponent to cast a big spell so we can get mana out of this spell swindle to crackling to rate Kylox. If that happens, we got a shot. It's still not guaranteed, but we'd have a shot at least. Opponent hits us, and it's got to happen this turn or else we're dead. Down to three. Well, Arcane Signet is not a big spell. Come on. Come on, you gotta play something big. You gotta play something. We need these treasures, opponent. <laughs> these treasures are very important to our plan. Whoa, Strider. Well, we gotta do it. Not as big as we wanted, but I think it's big enough. This Crackling Drake's not gonna be that big, though. Crackling Drake, gonna be 10 power? Oh, I don't know if 10's enough for Kylax to win. The fling doesn't do it. Well, here comes Kylax. We gotta try. We don't have another option because we are definitely dead next turn. Go to combat, attack you. Sack the Drake. Yeah, Kylax for 10. We really want 20 plus. Come on, deck. Raven form, explosive. Yeah, that is not gonna do it. We need you for 10. We need you for 14. Oh, we needed, we needed the Drake to be slightly bigger. Just a little bit bigger. We are Kyloxing <laughs> up against Soul of Wind Grace in this hand. We got a big score, so it's fine. And I like the ill-timed explosion. That card's been pretty good in this deck. Opponent, land of elves. Well, tap land, go. Soul of Wind Grace, eh? Opponent, mountain, and wow, that is a fast start. We are pretty far behind. We're gonna go mountain go, and our opponent's gonna untap with five mana on turn three, and a solo wing grace they can play if they want. Well, opponent gets a couple lands. Yeah, mana dork into cultivate. About as fast as you're gonna ramp in this format. No whammies, no whammies, please. Nothing, nothing, just, I don't even know. <laughs> nothing big, please. <laughs> Arcane Signet, even more ramping. And they can Soul of Wind Grace. Demolish. Oh my god, on the indestructible end! <laughs> oh, and a oh, and the shame scoop! And the shame scoop! <laughs> we were 0%. Zero 0% percent, zero percent to win that game. Our opponent was popping off, but they tried to blow up our indestructible land. <laughs> And then shooped, scooped in shame. Doing some uh, brawling. Ooh, Gore Claw, eh? Gore Claw, interesting. Probably mulligan that one. MDFCs. Uh, we'll keep. <laughs> Two MDFCs, snap keep. <laughs> Actually, they're just going to be tap lands, but I don't know. We might get a spike field value. It's possible. Opponent. They're a green deck. Green decks play mana dorks, right? Probably foretell, I guess. Yeah, let's let's do some foretelling. Opponent, forest, and yes, MDFC, MDFC, MDFC. We're gonna MDFC him. <laughs> we are going to MDFC him. Spikefield Hazard, busted. Out of here, mana dork. Tap land, go. MDFC power. When it works, it feels so good. It feels so big brain when your land is like killing your opponent's <laughs> your opponent's stuff. Ill-timed explosion. Card is impressing me more and more. When it was first spoiled, I was like, man, I don't know if I really think this card's that good, but the more I've played with it, the better it's felt. Let's take uh, some treasure production here. Mild expansion explosion. We need to see, we need to see a Kylox. We need to see a Kylax bone Atlanta where Lone speak, uh, sure. Sweetwater Cliffs. Uh Cheaty Land. Uh, I think we just passed. I don't think we really want to just kill this Loam Speaker. I think we'd rather we're hoping they play the Gore Claw here, and then we can sweep Gore Claw and Loam Speaker. And then our opponent's gonna have to wait a couple turns to get Gore Claw going again. Yep. Some ramping and some trampling. And wow, one mana green weaver. Uh well, let's make some treasures. Pitch the pack that I don't think we're gonna need against mono green. Oh, there's a Melic. We might be able to do this one kind of fairly, honestly. I do think we need to sweep here rather than play Melic. Melic's only a 12-12. It's gonna get bigger though, because we can discard a couple more spells. I don't think that mono green's gonna be that good at killing it. Uh let's discard discard. Actually, maybe we hold the intervention. Let's I don't think we need counters against this deck, really. 
sweep the board. Plus, one of the things, so I discard counters more aggressively than I probably should in Brawl because I know people scoop when their stuff gets countered. And if our opponent scoops, we don't get to see the cool thing. <laughs> So you gotta play counters because against some decks they're like essential and we do want them to predict our combo But if we're up against this like mono green deck where I, I don't think we need to counter their stuff to win I will aggressively discard the counters <laughs> to keep our opponent from scooping. All right, let's play an 1818 mono green Can you beat our 1818? Cage son, all right get that ramp on uh, We're gonna go 18 cards deep and see if it wins the game. Can we get any more? Spell we could play display of power, but that's a waste or kind of intervention. That's a waste raven. I yeah, let's just do it here it comes I mean 18 cards is a lot especially with this display of power in hand I guess we attack with both doesn't really matter because we are sacking the melek All right, what do we got in our top 18? Ooh, oh, that's that should be game uh, so magma jet you and so that's two explosive singularity you that's 12. Copy the explosive singularity. That's 22. Uh, Galvanic iteration and faithless looting and double cast. And I don't even think we need to do anything special. Sublime Epiphany, we'll just draw. I mean, we just win. Trying to do this as quick as possible so our opponent doesn't concede. <laughs> we could like bounce their cage then, but we're just, we have lethal here, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, Jawari Disruption, up the storm count, double cast, and then Mind's Desire. We could fling the Melek, but I'd rather Mind's Desire for 11. <laughs> I think we actually just have lethal in every possible way here. <laughs> island, Island. Oh, come on, Mind's Desire. I thought you were banned a Lightning Bolt. <laughs> All right, that's a little more damage. That's a little more damage. It's a little, just a little more. Just a little bit more damage. Oh, uh, we can't actually display a power either, can we? It doesn't matter. We still just win, but <laughs> we actually are mana short of display of power. Oh, increasing vengeance and a magma. But yeah, this is. Uh, we will decline to pay the one. Supreme will find us a seize the spoils mission briefing. Whatever, whatever. Thank you for sitting through this, opponent. <laughs> people, people get to actually see the kill. Some opponents do not, which is perfectly fine. If I, I might scoop if I was opponent, honestly. But some people like to see this, kill, uh, the kill. Discard, discard. Go get Vanic iteration. Copy the explosive singularity. So that's ten. That's ten more. That's two. And then we could just win by hitting with Malik, but we have a free lightning bolt. So, uh, GG. <laughs> Actually, two free lightning bolts, so double GG. <laughs> uh, Kylex is wild. This card is wild. It is so easy to make this a, a win the game card. It's hard to get to the point where you win the game with it, but wow, when it comes down, does it do some, <laughs> do some stuff. It is Kylex. Ooh, Sauron. Sauron the Dark Lord. Ooh, Sauron is a scary commander. I'm a little worried about this. I don't know if, I don't know how this is gonna go. Yeah, I mean, this is a good hand. We have double drakes, which is nice with Kylox. Those are, those are some of our best creatures for uh, digging deep in the deck. Uh, oh. Snarls. Snarls, untapped, but no value out of it being untapped. Even when a snarl comes into play untapped, it doesn't do anything. Gotta hate those lands. Least favorite lands, that might be my literal least, I think it is my least favorite land cycle in Magic. There are worse land cycles. There's like, oh my God, like homelands and fallen empires. There's some like ridiculously bad land cycles. However, those are super, hmm, Treasure Invasion. All right, those are super old and forgettable. The Snarls still see print uh, and people play them. So there's, they make more of an impact with their horribleness. Cause Watsu's like, oh, put them in every commander deck. Um, all right, so opponent's uh, amassing an army here. Let's see how this goes. Oh, opponent. What do you got, Sandman? Oh God, March of the Black Gate. That's, an that's another Dreadhorde Invasion. I don't know if we can beat double Dreadhorde Invasion actually. Team Pennant, all right, can give the token trample one plus one plus one. Well, let's deduce. Uh, yeah, our deck is not very good at dealing with enchantments. Uh, let's play an island. We are the, the color combination that is still not allowed to deal with enchantments. I guess Chaos Warp does, but give it another couple years and I'm sure that a uh, mono blue feed the swarm will be a thing, knowing Wadzi. The color pie, it's all, it doesn't exist, it's illusion. <laughs> Anything does everything. I honestly am not sure we can just beat these two enchantments. Like, we could 
hit some treasure production and just combo, but I'm actually legitimate. I've never been scared of one of these armies before, but the turn two, turn three, army, army, Dreadhorde invasion into March, and I don't know if we can beat it. I don't know if we can beat it. Opponent, gonna put the team pennant and the token attacks the problem is so our removal is mostly damage based and the zombie is just gonna outscale it like that's the concern we do have star of extinction but in general our deck is not very good at killing big very big creatures we can't even really block it with the drakes they're not big enough opponent are we are we thinking about the search for discovery whenever i run into an opponent who plays kind of slow my first assumption now is they're probably just trying to navigate mobile divide by zero sure you don't see that too much in brawl i guess they get to loot you can't get anything well okay they don't even loot land and but you can't get anything from your sideboard there's no sideboards we probably just got to play like a drake i don't think we can afford to leave up a counter they can't saw on this turn anyway let's play enigma drake and then we can also consider currently a one four not nearly army sized you know what? let's just consider right now two four it's a two four now opponent grows the army <laughs> we can't beat it we can't beat a dread i've never said those words before but we cannot beat a dread horde invasion so we need to live next turn we go to land five we don't have a treasure that's a clue oh we need we need a lot to go right and i just don't know if we have enough time with the clock of this trampling dreadhorn invasion zombie orc army yeah we just don't have enough time to get it set up we need to like play crackling drake we need a turn of like filling our graveyard oh yeah that that just that's the seal deal uh now we can't even draw into answers and uh well dreadhorn invasion not usually good but it was incredibly good that game this hands it's a little slow but we'll give it a go big score in these like four mana looting treasure cards are literally the most important cards in our deck those are the cards that actually let us get to kylox and they fill our graveyard and their spells that work with kylox so seeing a big score with three lands that by itself is pretty much enough for a keep we also have our mizzix mastery which it doesn't pop off often but when we do do the mizzix mastery thing it is kind of wild and crackling drake one of our best kylox cards so all around a not bad hand up against rada heart of keld so gruel ramp land shenanigans probably well let's start with the guild gate go opponent tap land mission briefing now well, that could do some work in the future we do need to hit at least one more land azusa's many journeys all right do you have an extra land yes well brainstorm can potentially find us a land we are not a very good brainstorm deck Brainstorm, this is where Brainstorm's pretty bad because uh, we don't actually, we don't really have any shuffle effects. I guess we could try to like Brainstorm and then Mission Briefing away the cards, but that's, that's a lot of work. Let's just Brainstorm. All right, all right, all right, that's fine. That's fine. Um, we found a land at least. It is tapped, unfortunately. So we're not gonna be able to big score next turn. We're gonna put back the Sahili and I guess the Explosive Welcome is just so much mana. Actually, yeah, I think that's fine. So we can deduce here, we gotta land for next turn. That gives us a big score, which should be more lands. We're, we're kind of doing it, we're getting there. Let's see how scary our opponent's turn is. Whew, tribute to the world tree. So not scary now, but a very scary card long-term. Opponent plays a fetch, passes. Play the tap land and I guess we just play the Sahili. We got nothing else to do. Sahili at least can make some blockers, which is nice. Being able to slow, I imagine like even just Rada is gonna be a very big creature, but I imagine opponent's gonna flip the Zeus as many journeys and get to draw a card with Tribute. Tribute's so good. All right, there's the Rada, draws a card. It's like three mana Great Henge or something. Well, there's a land, which is fine. Let's play the land. Well, now we're in try to stay alive mode. The Sahili is actually going to help here. Sahili makes tokens that we can stack to Kylox, although honestly, it's hard to make enough 1-1s for Kylox to be good. It's much easier to play one huge creature than make a million small creatures. Tireless Dragger draws a card. Ooh, and they saved up their fetch too. Opponent with the tight plays. Opponent, fetch land. Tireless Dragger. Clue land opponent's drawing a lot of cards i am kind of jealous 
<laughs> our opponent's Gruul deck is outdrawing our Izzet deck at the moment, and Fetch, and Clue. So well, Rada also can grow equal to the number of lands, so we're gonna have to be careful. It doesn't have Trample, thankfully. At some point, Rada is gonna turn into this, like, pay six mana, kill us kind of threat. Opponent, gonna sack a Clue, grow the tracker. I mean, we can keep the Saheli alive, right? We can big score, make a chump blocker, chump block, keep the Saheli alive. Uh, we will discard Explosive Welcome, just so much mana. So get a Servo, draw some more expensive cards, do a little chumping. Oh, that has an ability if you block it. Oops. <laughs> Oops, uh, we could have blocked Rada and it would have been exactly the same. That was a pun. <laughs> I don't think I've ever, I've never blocked that before. So we will remember that in the future. Wow, and I actually take advantage getting down the Valakut expiration. Volatile Fjord. Well, let's play our, I mean, Silver Bluff Bridge actually straight up won us a game earlier. <laughs> With the shame scoop. The most overpowered land in our deck. The only common basic land, uh, non-basic land that has actually just straight up won a game of, uh, of Brawl. <laughs> Record-breaking land. <laughs> it did require some shame scooping, but <laughs> still. I am glad with our opponent having eight cards in hand. I, I can respect this. Our opponent has eight cards in hand, and they're spending their main phase cracking clues. <laughs> A person after my own heart. Found it. Land. Clue. They might have needed a land. That would be the most obvious reason for that, is our opponent was missing a land. So we can, like, mission briefing big score. Blossoming Tortoise. Gonna mill and probably hit a land and draw a card. Definitely hit a land. Cage Sun. Should I be playing Cage Sun more? I guess I probably should. It is a good card. I just never think to put it in Brawl decks, or not typically. All right, so opponent, fetching, grabs a mountain. Velka expiration that our opponent shouldn't have if it wasn't for our punt. Well, let's see how they attack. If they send everything at Sahili, they can kill it. If they get greedy though, we would prefer them not to send, okay. Well, this works out. So opponent does get greedy. So we get to mission briefing. Trigger Sahili. Uh, mill both lands. And then we can big score, cast the big score, discard a complete the circuit, Sahili triggers. Well, Rouse Outburst can actually kill something. So we get to keep the Sahili alive. We'll take the we'll take the six. Definitely not blocking that Azusa thing. Again, we've learned our lesson. <laughs> down to 19. Oh, and then down to 16 from Valkyrie Expiration. We draw an island. The question here is, what do we kill? We can kill the Rada or the Tortoise. I don't think we're killing the Flip Saga. We could Mizzix Mastery, but Mizzix Mastery is like kind of weak, honestly. I think we need another, at least another turn of filling our graveyard if we're gonna try to Mizzix Mastery. Rouse Outburst, I think we go Tortoise. Rada is chump blockable, right? I think that's the argument. We'll take the counter. At least Rada's chump blockable. It can get really huge, but our servos can protect us. Yeah, let's get down the crackling drag. Seven power now. Other island. Only seven power now, but opponent land. Triggers and triggers. So opponent's basically a landfall bag, more or less, which makes sense. Rada's pretty landfally. Pony has many, many clues. They have so many cards though, I don't even know if they uh, clues kind of have this weird diminishing return where like they're two mana to crack, and if you have a huge handful of cards, they're not especially relevant because incentive to crack them is not very high. Clues, you can't have too many of them for really uh, for them to really do anything. And our opponents kind of like reach that point where they have so many cards and so many clues that the tireless tracker we don't even care anymore. Like, yes, it's, it's, you can draw all the cards with all the clues you want. We can't really stop you at this point. Well, block the Rada. I think we still need to double block. Wow, okay. Does our opponent think it has trample? Are we teaching our opponent a lesson about their own commander? Eh, oops, yes. I think our opponent, I don't know, must have thought it had trample for some reason. Unexpected windfall's good. <sighs> Crackling Drake's not that big. Yeah, let's windfall. Discard the tap land. Mega servo. These servos from Sahili are literally keeping us alive. Ooh, inescapable blaze. We'd have to spend a lot of treasures to cast it, but 
that is a way we could like kill Arata. We're gonna pass, leave up the removal, draw some more cards. Next turn might be the Kylox turn. I mean, it's gonna have to come soon because we are slowly dying. We can make at least one more servo though. We also gotta be aware of this Valakut expiration. That damage is just slowly adding up. Opponent, Oracle Moldaya, gonna keep the ramp going. Tribute triggers, draws a dry to the Ilsen Grove. Sure, try to the Ilsen Grove, that is fine. Opponent draws. <laughs> this tribute's drawn so many cards. Opponent, land, triggers, triggers. I mean, I imagine at some point they're gonna kill this. If our opponent just killed the Sahili earlier, I think we would have been dead by now. That one turn where they only attack one thing at the Sahili, I think that's where things kind of went wrong for our opponent. They have found a, a mortal son. Although, oh, Splendid Reclamation, God. We probably have to counter Splendid Reclamation if they, yeah, we definitely do. If they try to Splendid Reclamation, I think we have to counter. That would be so many, so many triggers with this Valakut Awakening. Thirst. Trigger Sahili. Ooh, Inescapable Blaze, Magma Opus. Grow the Drake. Block. Ah, we haven't really been able to keep a servo on the battlefield for Sahili. Fertilid's favor, two counters search for a land. So that becomes six power. Seven, eight from the Valakut Awakening, nine. Yeah, I think we actually have to counter this awkwardly. <laughs> that puts us very close to being dead. I don't think it literally puts us dead, but it puts us close enough that if they have a burn spell or something, opponent gives us the GGs. I don't know why they think they're dead, but okay. Opponent, Valakut Awakening. Hits us down to five. Oh God, that's Malik. Uh, well, here we come. Malik. This is gonna be our best Kylox yet. There's no way we're not gonna win this one. We don't have a counter. So if our opponent has instant speed interaction, but they're a Gruul deck, so I don't know what they're gonna have. Not something that kills Malik, I don't think. Oh no, are we gonna Salty Rope for a minute? Is it, is it salty rope time? <laughs> well, shout out to Sahili for keeping us alive. There is no way, no way we would have, uh, we would have stayed alive if Sahili wasn't making these servos. These servos, these servos kept us alive long enough to do the thing. And the thing should be really good. I mean, you never know. You never know with Kylox. It is random. We could just hard whiff. It is not impossible, but we're gonna go so deep in our deck. Like the way you shift the math in the favor, right? Is just up the number of cards that you see. And this is gonna be the biggest number we've seen so far. Like not, not even especially close. Like you're going 34, 35 cards deep. That's actually pretty impressive. Well, there's the Kylox. Here we come. The mana has been spent. Go to combat. We're also gonna make a ton of tokens with Sahili. So I guess worst case, if somehow this does go super wrong, at least we're going to, uh, we're gonna make nine infinite servos here. All right, what do we find in our top 35 cards? So we're gonna cast them all, all that we can. Seize the spoils. Discard a random card and we have like, oh, there's a grape shot too. Oh, this should be good. Explosive singularity, ill-timed explosion, magma jet. So explosive singularity is 10. Two more for magma jet. Raven form, get the dryad, I guess. Doesn't really matter. Salon divisions, go digging. Draconic intervention, exile a pull from tomorrow, X equals zero. Naturalize the pull from tomorrow. X equals, we don't want to discard that card. Board upon the winds. We're just upping our storm count here. Jawari disruption, you can counter the pull from tomorrow too. Supreme will, anticipate mode. <laughs> Uh, Pirate's Village. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll discard this Mystic's Master. You don't need that anymore. Cast an Opt. And Spell Swindle. You will also counter the natural. Well, uh, counter the pull from... Everything counters the pull from tomorrow. The bad day for pull from tomorrow. And then Memory Lapse, the Jewelry Disruption. Creative Outburst, your face. Uh, Supre uh, Sublime Epiphany, draw a card. And last but not least, Grape shot you and make few servos. And that was a pretty spectacular win. That is the power of Kylox. 19 servos, grape shot, 20 direct damage at the face. All we gotta do is wait for this deck to resolve. And that's why you build a, that's why you build a Kylox deck. <laughs> it is, oh boy, it, it is so fun when it goes off.
It is just such a cool fun deck to play. And it's also like relatively budget friendly. Budget, budget-ish, budget-ish. I don't want to call it full budget, but for a, for a hundred card singleton format, you can get away with playing a very budget mana base in the deck, which is nice. Well, here comes the Grape Shots. Pew, pew, 24. The slowest. Grape Shot kind of rubs it in on Arena. It resolves each one with the animation so slowly. Pew, pew. <laughs> I don't, I don't know why your phone is sitting through it, but thank you. Grape shot you. Grape shot you. Grape shot you. Very slowly. <laughs> Very slowly. Down to nine. Down to eight. Down to seven. Draw a card with Sublime Epiphany. Hit you for five. Grab a random card. Down to two. Memory lapse. Put that Droid Disruption on top. Spell Swindle. Make a couple treasures. Opt. Droid Disruption. Does it matter the game's about to end? Pirates Pillage. Draw some cards. Supreme Will. Draw a random card. A mountain. All we need to do is wait for our spell to re our stack to resolve when we got him. Born Upon the Wind and Neutralize and Draconic Intervention. Killing all of our servos. <laughs> Salon Division, take an expansion explosion, Raven Form, and finally, at the, we didn't even need the explosive singularity, at the bottom of the stack, Magma Jet, and GG, and that's what Kylox could do. That, that is the power of Kylox. If you like the idea of like storming off and casting your entire deck, kind of just by playing your commander, the deck can, uh, can really do some things. Oh. Oh, the combo turns are so sweet, but uh, yeah, it's Kylox. So what do we learn this week about Kylox in Brawl? And record-wise, I think we are right around 50-50. I don't know, my tracker doesn't work with historic Brawl matches, so I don't actually have a, a hard record on it, but I played a bunch of games with it because the deck's just like super fun. And I will say the combo is actually pretty realistic to pull off. Thanks to all of our spell slinging stuff and treasure production, it's actually pretty possible to get to play 12 mana, Melek Kylox in the same turn. And we got to see almost every Kylox energy up being lethal every time we did the thing getting to cast 10 or 20 or i think what is the most spells we had like 40 something we went deep i think with like having a melic and a crackling drake or something uh, but casting that amount of spells for free it was almost always enough to win the game there was one time when we we're like about to die and all we had was a 10 power crackling drake and we we're like well we're dead next turn anyway we might as well try it kylox with just 10 cards wasn't enough to actually win but every other time we would just make this ridiculously huge Huge stack of spells and then like storm off combo off cast everything for free win the game on the spot so i really really like this deck it's just like super fun to play if you like storm style decks spell slinger style decks this is probably the perfect brawl deck for you i will say i don't know if i classify this as a budget deck or not so i tried to make it a budget deck if you look at the mana base it is a full-on budget mana base the problem i ran into is some of the finishers we really needed like explosive singularity is just like the biggest damage burn spell we can hit uh, it's really hard to leave those out some of the spell copying effects like complete the circuit are at rare now some of the like special printings like increasing vengeance or like a uh, counter spell being a rare Stuff like that just ups the rare count unnecessarily. And then the other thing you really need is some amount of sweepers because our hardest matchup by far is actually aggro. Some people play aggro in Historic Brawl and if you just like curve out with one drops uh, and we don't find an ill-timed explosion or draconic intervention or a star of extinction, we pretty much just die. So it's a little bit higher on the budget than I really wanted it to be. But I'm very curious. I want to ask you like, what is the right number to consider a Historic Brawl deck or a Brawl deck budget? Because we're playing a hundred cards Normally in 60 card formats, I shoot for a max of 15 rares or mythics, but now we're playing 40 additional cards, which I guess would bump the number if you just kept the ratio the same up almost to like 30. So by that definition, we probably are a budget deck, but I'm curious, like what for you feels budget friendly for historic brawl? But if you like slinging spells and you like storming off, the deck is actually super fun to play, and it does some really big things. You do get run over by aggro sometimes, but eh, if you get run over by aggro, at least the game ends quick. And then you go on to the next one where you can do the cool thing. So that's Kylox. That's been our deck for today. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon.